So hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight on if you really want to get a horse or not. And hopefully this allows some people to really analyze if this is a commitment they want to make for the rest of their life. Hey bitch. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be um, kind of just me bitching. Nobody's made a video like this, and I don't know why. And this is something that needs to be talked about, okay? Because I get a ton of people as an equestrian here on YouTube who ask me on a very regular basis what they should get for their first horse, when they should get their first horse, everything you need for your first horse, and I'm here to tell you, you don't need a horse. And here's why. Horses suck. They suck. And no one is out here telling you why they suck. Everyone is uploading the best and most beautiful videography segments with their horses. Oh, look at me in my perfect barn with my perfect horses doing my perfect riding. Look at how beautiful my days are. Look at how much fun we have together. Most of owning a horse is stepping in horse shit, spending all your money and being broke, and on top of that, stressing out over injuries, stressing out over broken tack and replacing your tack and buying new equipment regularly and paying for all of your lessons, paying for all of your basic board. And you don't need that stress. Okay, girl, you don't. You don't need that stress in your life. I'm here to tell you that as a vet student, I can 150% say that 90% of the people that I come across on the daily are not equipped and not capable of owning and caring for horses. And they don't know what they're doing and they shouldn't have them, point blank period. So welcome to why you shouldn't own a horse from an equestrian, because it is not as beautiful and fun and amazing as what a lot of other equestrians make it out to be, like what you see on the internet. But before we get into this video, I wanted to say a massive thank you to myself for sponsoring this video, as always. I'm so great. I mean, I'm so reliable. I always manage to sponsor every single one of my videos, and I just love it. I love myself. So a massive thank you to Link Equestrian for sponsoring this video. If you guys don't know, we actually are releasing some new designs, which stirred up quite a bit of controversy that will be on linkequestrian.com next Friday, which is March 18th. But we also just a week or so ago launched our spaced out design, which I love it. I'm actually wearing it right now. It is amazing. It's probably one of my favorite designs. I just draw weird shit and I vibe with it, so. Is it dinner time, Link? Is it dinner time? Yes. <laughs> first things first, before I get into the logistics of every single reason why horses suck, which I'm sure I'm gonna miss out on a bunch because there's a lot of reasons why horses suck and why most people should not have them. One thing I'm gonna say is that if you are under 16 years old, I just personally believe that you shouldn't have a horse. I'm sorry to say this, it's hypocritical because I got my horse when I was 13, but let me tell you, the reason why I'm saying that is because now that I'm an adult, I struggled, okay? I had to pay for my horse myself, I had to work every single day at the barn, I literally had to quit school in middle school and do homeschooling because I was at the barn all day trying to clean stalls to pay for my horse's board, and it was incredibly stressful. It is definitely something that I don't regret, but also I kind of wish that I hadn't done because I missed out on a lot of core experiences as a child that a lot of my friends got to experience and I didn't because I was at the barn every single day working and doing the same shit over and over just to pay for my horse's board. That's why I tell people that if you're under 16 and preferably 18 years Years old you shouldn't have a horse period and I'm saying that for your own benefit you're gonna miss out on a lot of stuff as a kid you're going to not be able to do a lot you're not gonna be able to hang out with your friends you're gonna 
gonna be really tight financially because every single penny you make is gonna go to your horse. It's at your horse's detriment as well because the likelihood that you're gonna end up keeping that horse into adulthood is very low. I actually think, I don't know the real statistics, but I think it's less than less than 20% of kids under 18 that have horses actually keep those horses into adulthood. And that's a lot of horses that end up homeless or being rehomed to other places. And that's obviously not ideal. If you're gonna get a horse, you should expect to keep that horse for the duration of its life, which is 30 plus years. Trust me, you'll thank me for this. I know it sucks because I know there's a lot of kids that go through the pony phase and they really want a horse and I get it. I went through it. I experienced it. I know it sucks, but you will thank me for not getting a horse. What you should do instead is lease a horse. Lease a horse. I don't know why so many people don't want to lease. Leasing is one of the best things ever because you can lease a horse. You don't have to pay for any of the horse's medical expenses or farrier expenses or annual expenses or board. You just have to pay for your time with the horse. So you can go out and ride whenever you want. Tack is usually provided to you and you don't have to pay for anything for the horse other than the time you spend with it. Honestly, looking back on my life, I love my horse and I'm glad that I have him, but I really wish that I would have continued to lease as a teenager. Life would have been a lot easier for me had I continued to lease horses throughout my teen years instead of buy a horse. Because trust me, there were periods of time when I got out of high school transitioning into adulthood where I literally didn't have enough money for groceries and it was either pay for my horse's board or buy food for myself. And my horse always came first. So there were literally times where I went without food to pay for my horse. So I recommend that people get horses when they are financially stable enough to have them and house them. And when they can see themselves keeping that horse for 30 years of that horse's life, the duration of the horse's life. It's at the horse's detriment if you're not ready to own them. And it's also at your detriment because a lot of times people are incredibly stressed out when they own horses. And that's why most people, when they get a horse, they only keep a horse for a few years and then they very quickly fall out of love with having a horse because it's just too much work, it's too stressful, it's too expensive, and they just can't keep up that lifestyle. So trust me, it's not as glitzy and glamorous as you think. And now let's get into the nitty gritty bits of it. Be fine. Just go around her. So the biggest question I get is how expensive are horses? And on average, it obviously depends on what you do. It depends on if you're competing, it depends on what type of horse you have. But on average, most horses cost about $10,000 a year. And that's a lot of money considering that most average people or households or families only make about 50 to $80,000 a year. And that covers your monthly expenses, like your board, your grain, your supplements, any tack that you need to replace or keep up with. It covers your bi-monthly expenses, like your farrier work every eight weeks, deworming your horse every other month. It covers your annual expenses, like your vaccines, your physicals, your sheath cleanings, your teeth cleanings, etc 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 what that ten thousand dollars does not include would be travel expenses emergency vet work or prescription medications that your horse might need to be on it also does not cover lessons or show expenses that people usually pay for so you have to consider that ten thousand dollars a year per horse is usually the bare minimum expense that people spend on their horses for the average horse and the average person that's not really doing much of anything. But you have to calculate all of your emergency expenses as well. I always tell people that they should have an emergency fund set aside for their horse of no less than $5,000 in an emergency savings account because usually an emergency vet bill is going to be 
pretty expensive. What a lot of equestrians won't tell you that I'm gonna sit here and tell you is that owning a horse is incredibly stressful. You worry about your horses every single day because horses are very athletic, very agile animals, but they're also incredibly stupid a lot of the time. They do really dumb shit. They'll go out, they'll play with their friends, they'll, you know, jump up on the side of a fence and cut their shoulder open. Or they'll roll around on the ground and they'll pull a muscle. Or they'll step on a rock and they'll bruise the sole inside their hoof. I'm not even kidding. Owning a horse is probably one of the most stressful things anybody could do in their life. Horses really are a luxury, and I just don't really see why so many people are so in love with this idea of owning a horse. This is a real problem that I've seen over the last few years of being on YouTube and being part of the equestrian community, is I think that a lot of equestrians romanticize the idea of owning a horse, and they make it out to be really fun and really great, and don't get me wrong, there are amazing things about owning horses and I love my horses I will always have them but the vast majority of owning a horse is stressful and it is expensive it's time-consuming and a lot of people to be quite honest don't have the financial ability or the time to be taking care of horses every single day and that's exactly why equestrians have such a high turnover rate that's exactly why so many people fall out of love with horses after just a couple years so although there are great reasons and great experiences that come Come along with having horses and horses are amazing and I love my horses you have to consider the fact that a lot of what you see online is romanticized and most of owning horses is not glitzy and glamorous and beautiful and fun and you also have to consider something I left out is medical bills for yourself because you will fall off and you will get hurt I mean hey coming from the girl who spent $80,000 on a metal ankle for my leg because I fell off and my ankle and my leg shattered. So do I recommend horses to people? No. I think the vast majority of people should not own horses and I think the vast majority of people are not capable of owning horses and they are not capable of giving horses the time, attention, care that they need. And that's why so many horses end up in slaughterhouses, so many horses end up being rehomed after just a couple years. So as heartbreaking as it is for me to sit here and tell everyone this. I wanted to make this video because this is the most frequently asked question I get is when should you get a horse? Everything about owning a horse, what you should get for your first horse. And I'm here to tell you, don't get a horse, okay? Lease lease a horse. By the time you're an adult and you're financially stable and this is something that you see as a lifelong commitment for you, then you can decide to get a horse and you can decide if it's something that you really want to do. But all too often, I see a lot of people that just don't know what they're getting into. And that's why they end up quitting and getting rid of their horse after just a couple years. And the horse is the one that always pays. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight on if you really want to get a horse or not. And hopefully this allows some people to really analyze if this is a commitment they wanna make for the rest of their life. I love you guys so much. Definitely check out Link Equestrian and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!